when Harper Stewart agreed to be the best man at his best friend's wedding. <laughs> It was a reunion of old friends. Today, we are back with another movie recap. This movie seems to be very interesting. The movie which we are going to recap today is Best Man. Let's get started. But before starting, I would like to request all of you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also hit the bell icon to get notified. Without any further delay, let's begin. The Best Man is a 1999 American film written and directed by Malcolm D. Lee. It was produced by 40 Acres and Mule Filmworks, with Lee's cousin, Spike Lee, serving as producer. The film stars an ensemble cast led by Tay Diggs and Mia Long with the debut of Regina Hall, a Christmas-themed sequel. The Best Man Holiday was released on November 15, 2013 with a reunited cast, arriving in 1999 with an ensemble cast that included Nia Long and Tay Diggs, both black rom-com heroes for starring in Love Jones and how Stella got her groove back, respectively. Malcolm D. Lee's story about an octet of polished, successful strivers navigating a more career and friend drama appended the status quo, both in black Hollywood and in mainstream Tinseltown. The final chapters give voice to other identities Identities previously unseen, reflecting its audience's evolving mindset. One of the things that we were excited about, North says, was how do we honor where we are in society right now, the role of masculine and feminine identity. All of that is undergoing a much needed evolution. So how do we confront these characters who are in this midlife metamorphosis? What does masculinity mean in 2023? Being able to hold up a mirror has always been a part of the franchise. Being on the cutting edge of the issues of today, whether intersectionality, gender, LGBT, plus identity, that's the legacy of the best man. The best man for focuses, as the title implies, on men. Harper Diggs, the main protagonist and a slightly neurotic writer, is best man for the groom, Lance Morris Chestnut, a macho, religious footballer. Their friends from college include sensitive, bookish merch, Harold Perrineau, and pot-smoking, bohemian wildcard Quentin, Terrence Howard. In Chicago, Harper Stewart is an up-and-coming author whose debut novel, Unfinished Business, has been selected by Oprah's book club. Harper's devoted girlfriend, Robin, is frustrated by his unwillingness to commit to her. Harper travels to New York City to spend the weekend with old friends from college before they all attend the wedding of Lance Sullivan, a running back for the New York, and Mia Morgan. Serving his best man, Harper reunites with his friends Julian Merch Murchison and Jordan Armstrong, who has passed an advanced copy of Unfinished Business around their inner circle of friends, upon whom the book is based. None of the friends approve of Merch's domineering girlfriend Shelby, and Harper chastises Quentin Spivy for being unable to settle down in a job. The weekend reveals that Quentin has always been a free spirit, Lance has renounced his womanizing behavior, Harper is unsure about remaining a bachelor, and Merch has never been able to keep a secret. Flashback that her college days reveal that Lance met Mia through Harper, who almost slept with Jordan. Quentin antagonizes Lance about Mia, whom Lance believes has never been with another man. Learning Lance has a copy of his book, Harper worries he will discover that Harper and Mia had a one-night stand in college. Confronting Harper about their mutual attraction, Jordan admits she wants to have sex with him that night before Robin arrives for the wedding the next day and they share a kiss. Lance confronts Harper in the bathroom, but merely thanks him for his friendship. They are interrupted before Harper can come clean. As the groomsmen depart for the bachelor party, Jordan invites Harper to meet her later and Merch finally stands up to Shelby. At the party, Harper steals Lance's copy of Unfinished Business, to the disgust of Quentin, who has deduced Harper's secret. As the party gets increasingly drunk, Merch falls for one of the strippers, Candy, and Harper calls Jordan, accepting her invitation. Finding the book in Harper's coat, Lance reads it and finds out the truth, realizing that Mia slept with Harper in college to get back at him for his numerous infidelities. Enraged, he attacks Harper for his betrayal and almost throws him off the balcony, but Quentin talks him down and Lance calls off the wedding. A badly beaten Harper arrives at Jordan's apartment. He blames her for circulating the book, but she berates him for airing his own dirty laundry and leading her on. The next day, Harper meets Robin at the airport. She notices his injuries and he confesses. Disappointed, Robin prepares to leave, but Harper declares how much he needs her, and she reluctantly agrees to help him save the wedding. Arriving at the church with Candy, Merch breaks up with Shelby. Lance arrives, and his friends try desperately to stop him before he can tell his parents the wedding is off. Harper, who doesn't share Lance's religious devotion, halts him by asking him to pray. While Robin and Jordan tend to Mia, who is oblivious to the previous night's events, Harper reasons with Lance after much difficulty and assures him of his and Mia's love. After forcing Harper to pray with him, a tearful Lance proceeds with the wedding. Harper gives a heartfelt speech praising Mia and Lance's love that visibly moves the couple, earning Lance's forgiveness. Shelby pushes a bridesmaid out of the way to seize the bouquet while Quentin catches the garter. Jordan finds closure with Harper, telling him Robin is the woman for him. On the dance floor, Harper thanks Robin for her help and in front of the entire wedding party, asks her to marry him. She says yes. The film ends as everyone dances the electric slide to 
to the song Candy by Cameo. In a post credit scene, Shelby and Quentin wake up in bed together, to their shock and disgust. I wanted to make a universal story, Lee says. People want to get married, they want to fall in love, they want to feel secure, they want to have friendships. All of these things are not culturally specifically black. Here the movie ends. That's all for today. I hope you liked the video, and if you really liked the video, give it a huge thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to get notified. Also, leave a comment below which movie recap you guys want to watch in the next video. We are always here to entertain you. Your appreciation means a lot. See you guys in the next video. Until then, take care.